Hi there. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Cough, coffee must be. <laughs> Hi, Roman. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing well. It's and cold. It's cold there too because it's cold here. I got 31 <laughs> degrees outside. <laughs> That's nothing. <laughs> Well, if it's any consolation, we're supposed to get a little bit of snow at the end of the month. We've got no snow. Now, you, you the Pyrenees will like it. You're going to lose your dogs in the snow. You're going to not be able to find them. I know. <laughs> I won't be able to get them in either. Right, right. <laughs> so what are we talking today? Um, I was wondering, <clears throat> you know, I, I wanted you to be here today because you see things with a different eye because you work with rescues and you work with very expressive rescues. Uh, Pyrenees are my one of my favorite breeds um, in, in the guardian category. And I have the feeling that when we do behavior modification, we're missing many, many times. A very important factor is when the dogs ask for forgiveness and regret. And then we're missing the part to respond to that. I see this very often where people reprimand the dog for doing a certain behavior. And then the dog shows certain feedbacks. And these people continue to reprimand the dog and to the point where the dog basically attacks them. Yeah. So I want this, uh, we're going to kind of discuss a little bit and everybody was be interested in, in sharing, you know, their experience, how, how, uh, a very simple event of reprimanding a dog for something that he did wrong based on our point of view, something that a dog perceived as appropriate based on his point of view, our response, how we try to correct the dog for mad misbehavior, the way the dog felt guilty of doing something wrong, ask for forgiveness, and then we're going even harder on them because we see that he's vulnerable and then we want to get that message over. And then the dog escalates that issue to a dispute and then to, into aggression. And then these dogs end up hopefully not in your right. facility. Well, my question would be, instead of reprimanding the dog, can't we um, redirect the dog into something we want the dog to do instead? And then, now this is for the working, the guardian breed, the working mm -hmm. breed, okay? So what I... Um, have a, what I run into a lot of times on my calls that I get um, is the dog barks at the window and they say, okay, I got this. And then they go about, they, they move them away and that's it. I said, well, what was the rest of it? What job did you give them to do? Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's not really an, uh, a reprimand that is redirecting to a different job to do. Okay. Um, I don't typically reprimand a dog. Like if the dog pees on the floor, then comes to me to get petted. What am I supposed to do? I pet the dog because that moment's gone. All right. I don't want to say you're a bad dog and the dog thinks he's bad because he's wanting me to pet him. Okay. So the reprimand, I guess, uh, uh definition would be, um, 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 something I would, uh, maybe I'm misunderstanding here because I don't, I don't tell my dogs ever they're a bad dog. I always redirect them into something that I want them to do and reward them for that. And, but the great Pyrenees has the amazing ability to associate that. They didn't get rewarded for that, but they did for this. So in that respect, the Pyrenees is kind of an easy dog to work with. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you feel, your uh, dogs in general can show regret? Yes, I do. How would you say that? Yeah. Because well, how do you see a regret? Like when he says, oh, I'm sorry, daddy, I screwed up. Memory. The dog's memory. Maybe he forgot that, oh, crap, man, I wasn't supposed to do that. Daddy, I'm sorry. He comes in, lays his head <laughs> on my, lip, my lap, and I pet him. It's okay. You forgot, but let's remember next time. And I show them. Am I off base on that? So what are the signs of regret based on your opinion, based on what you've um, seen so far? 
Well, that would, uh, that, that would vary from dog to dog, obviously. Um, uh, the one of the, my big boy that's outside right now, my big giant boy, when he shows, uh, what, when he shows what I feel could be regret is laying his head on my lap, looking his head up at and looking his eyes up at me. And, and then I look around and well, he ate some trash over there and he came over because he forgot he wasn't supposed to eat the trash. Right. Uh, now, once again, that's dog to dog. And, um, um, and this could be way off base on what the dog's thinking, but the way I respond to it is what's important. Okay. So is that regret? I'm not sure. I believe dogs do show regret. I, I agree with you. Um, what I see, <clears throat> I work with dogs, especially with trauma. <laughs> where if a dog feels guilty of something, puts him in a survival mode because he's afraid of the consequences. And if I'm there and I have no clue what's happening behind my back and I turn my back and the dog is there in the garbage bin and he sees me, the dog goes into a survival response in that moment, his sympathetic nervous system kicks. He sees me as a threat <laughs> because on his traumatic memory that somebody before that, if it wasn't a trash bin, he would be great. And all of a sudden the dog goes into a fear response. It just becomes a perfect storm right at that moment. And whatever you say to that dog, everything comes into the dog's mind. It's right. And all of a sudden the dog would shut down. Yep. Now, we see also that people get upset. Children start punching the dog on the head because it's so funny because it can pull on the ears and the dog licks that baby in the face. Yeah. What is that? I see many people say, oh my God, he's so cute. He loves my baby. He kisses him in the face. I would say right now yeah. the dog, by doing so, he is showing the dog remorse, uh, the baby. Regret because he doesn't understand what's just happened. He says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I screwed up. You know, I want to make up for don't hit me anymore. Right, absolutely. And also, it's a nervous thing too because of that right there. Right. So the dog feels guilty. Yes. There's a reason why I'm getting hit. I don't understand why it's happening. So I try to calm you down, okay, by showing regret. The other thing that we see many times is dogs go belly up in front of people. Oh my God, he wants belly rubs. No. Whoa, right? <coughs> tell, tell me about that. That's submission. The dog's ready is it, to die. Is it? Because my dog does it all the time in his bed. Well, then what depends on the circumstances surrounding it. Exactly. So I say it's a gesture. It's a voluntary gesture <clears throat> that has a side note. It depends on his environmental factors. I take my hat off, not because I respect you. It's because I have something in my head. The gesture, you can take whatever you want it, but you perceive it. If we say the dog is aggressive, it is our victim state of mind observing that dog and calling it aggression. Because from a dog's perspective, it's not aggression, it's totally justified. So the same thing, if a dog does belly up, it's up to the dog why he does it. Mm -hmm. What makes me what depends on the dog, not really myself. So if a dog comes up to me and social submission, as you say, I don't really like the term because I don't think yeah. dogs are yeah. submissive. But anyway, <clears throat> for, for the conversation's sake, <clears throat> I see dogs show a social behavior, go belly up because they want to show in, in that version how they respect the person in front of them in order to do that, they offer their lives yes. to them. So that belly up is, I surrender my life to you, do whatever you want to do with me. I expose my vulnerable parts to you. Now, we can take this out of context or we can see it in the context. What is the situation? Is the dog coming up? Is the dog entering a situation? Is another dog entering the situation? Is the dog part of a situation? Is the dog not part of the situation? <clears throat> what, is, what is the general idea of it? What does a dog see? What's, what's the person? So we take basically a screenshot of a behavior and then expand it to something, a general mindset of a human perspective of it. 
So I'm not saying we shouldn't humanize animals because what we call humanizing, we should call it mammalizing because right. we talk about mammals here. So they are emotionally intelligent, they have emotions. So therefore, there is a reason for that behavior that is likely emotional based. And if we don't understand the functional emotional behavior, then we cannot just call it out. So question to that, how do we respond to a behavior like this? And before you kind of answer you that, I would like to invite everybody who is watching here. How about you guys tell me where you're from? Because I am in Oregon and Steve is in Ohio and you are watching from where? Okay, I know it's that <clears throat> I, I start very, very dry here because it really matters to me and it's a passion of mine to help people understand what they're dealing with. If they are in a relationship with their dogs, they need to understand the relationship. Mm -hmm. They don't just look at the behavior and then make judgments based on pre-existing ideas of, oh, dogs are aggressive or dogs going to take your family down or if you're not having your dog submissive, your dog will take over your family and going to kill you at some point and your kids, right? So I was wondering if, if we are conscious about our dog relationship, we have to be very aware of, hold on a second. Yes, Barbara? So when dogs are in that relationship and we're not clarify the way we communicate, we put our dog's relationship into question. And what happens then, we have insecurity and dogs feel insecure and the dogs want to make up for it. And then the dogs will make bad behaviors and then we misinterpret those behaviors and it just escalates to a dispute. What do you think? I think that with my breed, which can cover any breed, okay? My breed, uh, everybody calls them stubborn. Roman calls them persistent. <laughs> it's a breed trait, sorry. <laughs> breed trait, all right. Great Pyrenees uh, is a very persistent breed because if, if you call them and they don't come in, they're not done with something probably, right? So anyway, what was the question again, Ron? <laughs> okay. let, let's, let's rephrase my question. Let's start from, so, yeah. what are the signs of regret? In general like can you share somebody some some of them yes well once again Charlie he will head and lap turned what some people would say submissive <clears throat> and believe it or not try to do things right what he thinks I want him to do okay now I'm looking I'm looking for the signs here like I have no clue I just watched the video here you guys are talking here blah 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 you know now the question is Okay, how do I see my dog showing regret? Because my dog doesn't put his head on the lap. No. He put his paws on my lap. Is that the sign of regret? Like, hey, mom, I ate your cut. Sorry. <laughs> Great Pyrenees typically doesn't show a lot of regret. Mm -hmm. And I haven't worked with a lot of other breeds in 30 years. And, um, and uh, that's a good looking dog, Lindy. <laughs> Why do you think Pyrenees don't show so much regret? Because they're always right. <laughs> Just like my that's, wife. That's a, key, that's a key here. I feel guardian breeds, and I put guardian breeds as all the dogs who are likely to guard Pyrenees, Marema, um, Akbash, Border Collies, not really. I would say more the Australian Shepherds. Um, Mastiffs, Cane Corsos, yep. Presa Canario, all these, you know, guardian breeds have one thing in common. They do what they think is right. Yep. So they have a sense of justice. <clears throat> Where I'm going with that is if a dog feels justified for his actions, he will not regret his actions. It would be stupid. Like it's kind of like a cop pulls you over for speeding, cuts you a ticket and then he regrets it. Like that would be weird. Right. So if we if we if I see a dog's behavior, the first thing I look for is a, is a general overview. And, and I use here my we, that's Willie. Say hi, Willie. Hi, Willie. Hi. OK, let's. Hi, Willie. <laughs> 
So Willie is a very interesting case. So Willie doesn't look really like that. He looked more like a brown beagle, but because for a training situation, um, I, I did an online session with a client who, whose dog basically was aggressive to other dogs. And we had to introduce him to similar looking dogs. So the similar looking dogs would look like this, basically the same capture. So we use spray paint to do the markings as the other dogs. So sorry, my inaccuracy on the painting skills. And so what we, what we did here is, and here you actually can see the original color is actually brown, right? Um, and so what we did is we painted that dog to look like the other dog. And what I wanted to trigger the dog is to check in with his own behavior, the way he sees the situation, his environment, and make a judgment, adjustment. I see a dog, I have to kill a dog, doesn't make any sense because what you see is not a real dog. That dog doesn't respond. Therefore, your sympathetic system triggered by the view of a dog, triggering you to do something that you think is right and then at the end you end up being wrong. How do you fix this? And the first thing the dog has to do is to look in, into himself and recognize his decision was wrong. Based on what was it wrong? So we're looking at morals and ethics. There is a moral and ethic aspect to a dog for making a choice. What is right, what is wrong, depends on what. There must be something he's referring to. <coughs> we're looking likely in a family code of conduct. So a dog who grew up in a healthy environment, like in a healthy family environment, a healthy group environment, these morals and ethics are being adjusted through the group. A dog who doesn't have that knowledge, he's never been socialized, he's never been grew up in a real family that has those morals and ethics, mm -hmm. then the dog doesn't know what's right or wrong. So basically he has to adjust himself and says, what I'm trying doesn't work. Do I show regret? No, I just try differently. But what we're dealing with here is a sympathetic system triggers to make the dog that judgment. Am I right or am I wrong? My system is triggered. I'm in denial right now. I am in aggression right now. My body doesn't feel good right now. I need to do something about it. How do I get out of my system that I'm trapped into? And if the body doesn't make sense of the situation, the dog is trapped in a situation, that brain has to start making the call. The body will need the brain to make that choice. And if the brain is not properly programmed, it's kind of like with people where they have these social rules false adjusted and they just kill you because you asked the question that didn't fit their purpose. Why would they do that? Because something is wrong. I mean, not in their brain, but in their judgment. So we cannot expect a dog to have morals and ethics <clears throat> and show regret if he doesn't understand that he's wrong. And if we come in with red flags, and say, you're wrong because I said so. The dog is like, I don't give a bark. I'm going to bite your face off. <laughs> so from your experience, and if you have seen, I'm sure you have seen dogs getting in trouble with each other. Have you recognized that certain directions, certain behaviors directed to certain points of the body are associated with how the dog feels about the situation? Absolutely. Can you, can you share a little bit with me? Meanwhile, okay. before you answer the question, okay. let me... Do some branding. <laughs> <laughs>
We've ar- we already know this, mm-hmm. all right? So that also falls under this category also. First of all, when a dog comes into your home, the dog's not wrong. Just ask the dog, he'll tell you. The dog doesn't know right from wrong. We have to teach them. And we're the ones that make it wrong, okay? Not the dog. So we have to teach the dog, this is not what we want you to do. We want you to do this instead. Now, depending on how you deliver that to the dog makes all the difference in the world. And there's no textbook technique. It depends on the dog, okay? You agree with that, Roman? And so to put a a blanket comment out, yes, the triggers can be in different parts of the dog's body. All right. If the dog pees on the floor and you go bad dog, bad dog, guess where that memory is? It's right there where where the dog pees. All right. If he gets into the trash and pulls out a piece of trash and you say, give me that. And he goes into survival mode because it's his, it's his treasure and he thinks he can't survive without it, it doesn't matter who you are, he's going to protect that. And guess where that memory is going to be? Okay? It's going to be right there. You don't want memories in the dog's mouth. So how we deliver our message to the dog is so important. And, 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 and they've got to be able to receive it the way you're delivering it too. So this is where you have to know your dog. Mm-hmm. How is that for beating around the bush for that answer? <laughs> well, it's 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 a valid opinion. So, um, I, I from statistic we know that seventy based on you know medical statistics and insurance statistics because that's the guys who pay the bills. Seventy one percent of dog bites occur in the extremities. Oh you know? well, yeah, yeah. Why why extremities? Why do you think is that? Well, first of all, the hand is obvious. Okay, why? The, what hand does, the, the hand does the everything. Hand, a hand that's feeding the dog, why would the dog bite the hand? Because it's also the hand that reprimands the dog, too, in a lot of okay. cases. Okay? And, well, it's also your moving object for some breeds. All right? Let's get that. It's going to hit me. Right, right. Bam. But why I've, the leg? You ever take your dog and go mm, with your knee? The dog's going to go for that. Okay? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That's your memory. That's the memory. No. See, the dog doesn't store memories just in themselves. They also remember what the human did too. Right. Now let's look a little bit on the breed traits. Where does usually a hunting dog go if he hunts a prey? Towards to the, the legs. Oh, Where? for hunting the prey? Yeah. Usually the butt, the, the smell, everything. No, no. Where, he, where will he bite? Oh, where's your prey? Oh, right in the neck. Okay, so option, shot. option to kill is around the neck. The main main arteries, right yeah. there. Okay. For predators coming for the dog is Good. that's the kill shot. Now, if if a female mother or a female parent, dog parent, would address a behavior on a dog that is beyond acceptable, will he go after the throat? Will he go after the neck? Will he go after the legs? Will he go after the snout? Will he go after the tail, the butt? Where would he likely go? The the most recent memory. That Explain. would be my that's my opinion. Because Explain. I have to think memory, about this one. The most recent memory of the episode. Mm-hmm. Okay, of the previous episode, episodic memory. Okay. Okay. So that's you mean my where, 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 where make the it dog? Right. I try to understand the answer. So you feel when when the the parent goes after the dog's, let's say, example neck, is it because of the situation of the event? Oh. It makes the judgment. This is the dog parent. The, neck? the dog parent is redirecting the dog into something that she needs the dog to do. Mm-hmm. The the dog parent when the, the dog's not trying to hurt the the parent the mama dog's not trying to hurt the puppy. The mama dog's trying to keep the puppy from being hurt. So if she goes up the leg, she's trying to read the leg moves and she's trying to redirect the leg. Redirecting redirecting means I going after your leg, meaning is I redirected that that propels you in a direction. 
Right. So a, 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 a herding dog, a border collie or Australian shepherd will go after the sheep's legs to move him in a direction he wants him to go or he challenges him. Yeah. Right. So what would, for example, I know it's not your specialty, but I was just, you know, from your experience, you have seen a lot of stuff. Um, um, a cattle dog who is challenging the cattle, where will he go? Towards no, the face, I, towards the body. He nips the heels. Why it, that? Um, that is, I didn't go into that. I don't know okay. why. I feel it's again the same thing. The reason border collies do they redirect because the legs move you in a certain direction. Right. So you push you on the right leg. He wants you to go to the left. Okay. Because obviously you try to avoid the right yeah. side because you're being attacked there. And then if a bull is challenging the cattle dog and faces him face to face, where will he go after the heels? If it's about territorial. He's going after the face, yeah. after his nose. Now let's go to the next level. I have a child and the dog is on the couch, hanging out, doing things. Now and the dog bites the child in the face. Why would he do that? Because he wants to redirect him? Or does he want him a territorial message? Uh, you're, ent you're entering with your face, my territory. That is correct. And um, guardian breeds are going to go to the highest point so they can see the most. Okay. This is their perch, not yours. A tactical location. Uh, yeah, that is absolutely. Child, um, the, the question is general. Let's just assume the dog knows the child, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. <laughs> and um, child climbs up there with the dog. Dog bites the child's face. Um, what did the child do to make the dog feel he had to bite the child? Okay. That would be my question. I mean, I hate to ask, answer a question with a question, but the dog didn't do it for no reason. Dogs, exactly. well, dogs are looking, not aggressive. They're reactive. We're looking, we're looking if we, if we judge the dog for his behavior and we want him to regret the behavior, we need to understand where the behavior is coming from. Mm -hmm. And I see many people, I had a conversation yesterday with a parent where he feels so betrayed of his dog, of biting him because he wanted to take something away from his dog that he inappropriately took out of his garbage bin. And he went after the dog's item that he has in his mouth and he got bit multiple times on the hands. Mm -hmm. And then he went after his face. So. I want people to really, really understand the concept here that the dog did something justified. You expect the dog to regret by reprimanding him for his actions. And then you go violent towards his actions by basically you becoming territorial and you becoming more aggressive than your dog actually was without knowing why your dog went to the garbage bin. And then you put yourself into harms because you're, you're putting yourself as a predator, as an aggressor, and as a person who doesn't regret his actions and you're going after a predator, all he has to do is bite your face off. Yeah. And you don't see that coming. I mean, that's a total denial right there. We miss the point that if your dog does something, there's a reason for that. Yeah. And you cannot expect the dog to regret it if he believes that reason is totally justified. So if you have a problem with justified actions that your dog does something that you disagree with, then first of all, I would check in my, my family code of conduct. What are we doing here? Is it appropriate to do this? Does the dog know that rule? Like we know when we sit on the table, we wash our hands and mom is serving us our favorite, you know, cake. And then she stays there and looks at you guys and you're like, yes. And she's like, well, should we eat dinner now? And you're like, yeah, we're hungry. And then what is missing in that situation? And everybody's looking their hands. Oh yeah, we're dirty. And how do we fix that? Those kids or those people on the table, not being aware of the family code of conduct will never be able to look at their hands, checking them if they're right or wrong. They would just demand the food because they think they have the right for the food. So if the dog feels they have the right for the garbage bin because it's there and nobody claims it, therefore it's for everyone and therefore I want it. And then I'm there first. I got it. I found it. I smell it. And you come behind my back sneaking in like a 
I don't want to say the word from a dog's perspective. And you come in and want my bone, really? You don't you see that I'm here first? Like you don't you get it? These are social rules. So we have social rules, the general idea, which comes most of them come pre-programmed. Like I have to respect my parents, the ones who give me life, right? So we call this imprinting. Who is that who gives me life? Therefore, I have to respect. Otherwise, I'm going to die. And then we have the social rules where we learn through games. And I'm going to my next question. How do we teach those dogs morals and ethics? How do we teach the dogs remorse, regret, and forgiveness? How do dogs learn that with each other? What is that thing that makes them learn it? And if anybody of you guys in the audience, audience listeners, have an answer to that or opinion to that, why not? Why, why don't you share it here? Like, hey, I have the. I think this is what's happening here. Steve, I don't want my dog to have to show regret, but you know what? It's not a perfect world, okay? It um, because when a dog has the emotion of regret, that means the dog knows he did something wrong. When a dog knows he did something wrong, he doesn't want to do something wrong. He wants to do things right. He wants to please his human. Okay. So I prefer my dog doesn't have to show regret. What are the signs of regret? Once again, that, that I'm not sure my dog even shows regret because he's never wrong. Mm -hmm. okay? Now How? that's my dog. Mm -hmm. All right. That's my relationship with my dog. The, Biggest thing with dogs showing regret, it depends on how you've, well, interacted with your dog, how you've taught your dog. Um, does your dog show regret? Yeah, maybe he hurries up and walks away. I like that answer. Tail down. And that can also mean other things, too. That means he's afraid of you. He's afraid of your response. Okay. It, but it could be regret. Right, Rome? So... Man, that that that's uh that that um, man, so many different breeds. Great Pyrenees typically, they're not going to show regret. Mm -hmm. All right, house pet well, great Pyrenees. I can't course, I can course, it will not show regret either if he thinks no. it's right. That's right, and that's they, if they think it's right, and that's all about how you teach them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now here's the question: How do you teach them regret and forgiveness? Because it's a social thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm going in a play date with my friend, Willie, Willie, <laughs> and then I'm, I'm rough. I'm like, hey, Willie, I'm going to bite your neck because I love biting necks. And Willie is like, holy bug, what are you doing, dude? You're going to kill me. What's next? What should the other dog do to Willie to let Willie continue the game? Well, obviously. Can Willie say anything or is he being being taken down for actually resisting that rough play. Usually, where does this education come in? Right. And and where does the human interact in this? Okay. Right. Because first of all, we've got brain and we've got instinct. Okay. Mm -hmm. If Willie uh, tripped the survival instinct in a, the other dog, then there's going to be a fight ensuing. Okay? Right. This and is where I'm going with this. Yeah. I'm going with this when people take their dogs to the dog park. Mm -hmm. and let them play and then something happens and all of a sudden in 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 you know you know quotes all of a sudden my dog attacked the other dog and they had to leave the premises because their dog was the bad dog mm -hmm. i'm questioning that so me I too point it out what what happened there was social unacceptable behavior. Somebody did something to somebody else and didn't regret it. And somebody went for it because he felt regret was appropriate actions that you didn't take. And therefore I have the right to correct you for that social inappropriate behavior. Makes me wrong trying to save my ass of your inappropriate behavior. Am I the one at fault because I bite your face off because of injustice? Or is the other guy who didn't regret his actions is actually at fault. And the other guy who was socially appropriate sent him that clear message and we misinterpret that and punish the dog who actually was right. Yeah. Am I wrong here? I mean, I wish I would. I would solve all the problems we have in shelters, but many dogs end up in shelters because they want justice. 
I want justice. If somebody does something to me that I feel is unfair and I'm, you know, reporting on Facebook, I'm like, dude, this guy is going rough on me. Like, he's not respectful. And Facebook like, sorry, it's against policy to report it. I was like, really? I'm, I'm logging off Facebook, right? <laughs> Am I wrong? Am I right? So if a dog goes into a dog park, is being attacked by another dog for not behaving accordingly, whose fault is it? And my question is also to people, are we aware of those play date rules? And I know, Steve, you have to go. So I'll, I'll, let, you, I'll let you finish your sentence. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Steve has another show, which we actually will be live there too. So you're welcome Don't to join, join it. Yeah, Roman. maybe Steve. Maybe Steve wants to to add a link so people can join there um, who, who have Pyrenees dogs. Yeah, yeah. Let me. Um, uh, while I try to answer, uh, it's hard for me to do two things at the same time. Okay, I know. So just bear with me. <laughs> Peer uh, with me. <laughs> beer with me. There you go. Um, back in the old drinking days. Um, no, no, peer, peer, Pyrenees with oh, me. Oh, peer with me. Instead of bear, you know, white okay, bears, white Pyrenees that. kind of thing. Yeah. So we have. Um, uh, where was I on the answer anyway? We were talking about how do you see the dogs learn? Where do dogs learn? How they learn to, to learn regret and forgiveness? Well, that is, um, um, that's a, <laughs> well, it starts with the litter. All right. And, but Good. that doesn't, it starts with the litter mates. And right. have you early weaned your dogs? I mean, did they leave the litter too soon? Okay. Good. I love that. I go to the next level because then if litter learns how to regret and forgive, what is litter mate syndrome? People says litter mate syndrome. Whatever dogs have a problem with, we're going to dump in litter mate syndrome. Right. Just to give you a heads up, I have deeply researched it. I have not found one scientific paper that says litter mate syndrome is this it doesn't actually exist in syndrome in litter mates and the term syndrome is even wrong anyway i just clear that out so yep. do litter mates play with each other and learn regret and forgiveness supervised by their parents who set up the rules i believe they do because i've seen it i agree with you totally on that i also agree that if we take the dogs away from that leader and from that parents, we take over parenting responsibility. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we have to set the new family code of conduct, which is likely unlike the same they had in their previous home. The same right. applies to the dog that we adopted from a rescue that has a different family code of conduct in a different home who really did nobody give a bark about the dog. So there were no rules at all. And suddenly we want the dog to be compliant <clears throat> It doesn't comply, and then we use shock collars and prong collars because he needs to be compliant without teaching the dog the code of ethics. Yeah. Yeah. And then the dog will not regret. Right. I have to run, Roman. I can't post a comment for some reason in here, so I sent it to your messenger to where you can put the link in, okay? I will do that. Thank you. See it's you in a bit. National Pyrenees Rescue's Facebook page. See you in uh, 19 minutes. Bye, Roman. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for joining. Okay. This is, these are very educational for everybody. Okay. Yeah, Lindy, uh, Roman will post the link to the Facebook page where the broadcast will be. Good, All good. Right. Okay. So, Bye. Guys, stay tuned. Steve will leave. I stay here still put um, because we are talking about forgiveness and regret. And it's something very important for you as a parent to know because especially also if you're a trainer or behaviorist because it's very important for us to understand when the time for forgiveness steps in and when the time for regret is being expected and how do we teach the dog those things okay so stay tuned let me do some Damn, my finger doesn't do what I want. It just is his own thing. I just actually cut myself off here. So how do dogs learn regret and forgiveness? Through playing. So what we usually look for is we want to have the dogs play with each other. They're similar age. So there are similar expectations, similar behaviors, similar emotional life stages. And it's very important to understand that 
the only way to intervene in those social plays and games where dogs learn to regret and forgive and then this learning and forgiving becomes a skill of hunting and killing or a skill of care and protection all these things are fall together as a system so it starts with family code of conduct then the dog should understand that his actions affect his neighbor or his partner how do we teach those things so game is a great way to play with it teaching the dog for example that you feel intimidated freezing is a first sign of ooh it's too much what you're doing freezing freezing means i feel uncomfortable i'm in a state of mind that i don't know where to go should i stay or should i play with it should i fight or should i fight and that dog should see that message and recognizing that the reason why you feel this way it makes you freeze is because of his behavior towards you so we expect the dog in a very early stage of play between four and five months where he's already being aware of that that his actions have an emotional cost and affect you but the feedback is important so when your dog does something for example mouthing you okay he's mouthing you he's all over your face and you move against your dog pushing him away and do all these things you basically encourage him to continue because you're not asking him to regret his behavior you playing into that game you actually escalate it because you're playing that game with him and then all of a sudden you get aggressive to your dogs and then so i see people telling you really ridiculous things like sticking the finger on your dog's butt when he bites you like give me a stinking break and then or, or squeeze his muzzle or or push his teeth against his his cheek so he he hurts when he bites what do, do what are we showing here we're showing violence as a response to violence so there is no regret it's just pain and just fear there's no education behind that but if we respond accordingly so if you bite me i'm moving away from that game and i'm not paying attention to your trial but that i like and here is your reward i'm coming from a positive reward perspective and i show you what's acceptable and what's not i don't accept i accept i interact i'm not interacting i'm engaging i'm not engaging and that has to come very quickly if you want to know how quickly then observe how quickly the dog can shake his head you know if your dog can shake his head that quickly if he has a control of his head that quickly how quickly you have to be with your feedback smaller dogs have more predators like predator dogs like the ones who chase rodents and all this stuff are more likely to have faster thinkers than the slow mastiffs who are kind of like hmm, let me think about that a little bit um let me see if it's of benefit of my purpose and all of a sudden we see that bigger breeds have slower process than guarding breeds or guardian breeds the other thing that we, we look for is that our feedback has to come with an emotional charge i cannot ask my dog for you know for forgiveness if i'm coming in predatory Oh, I want you to forgive me. No, you cannot come in and says, "Oh, take that treat," because I want you to give take that treat. So the way we approach things is very important. We teach the dogs through games. So game is very important factor. And try to play games where your dog learns to engage and disengage. And the consequences of his actions have immediately affect to your behavior and that's how you set up morals and ethics so if your dog jumps on you and you push him back you're enforcing it if your dog jumps on you and you back away and don't play with it and wait for your dog to regret his actions and sit instead meaning give me you distance is a sign of regret you have to forgive and forgive is followed by reward forgiveness meaning is again and interacting with you forgive okay i'm not an english expert but for giving is giving for therefore your dog is doing something that you like then give him something in exchange for that right so your dog sits you engage your dog jumps you disengage 
But then you have to be very careful because you also have to, he has to regret the mindset, not just the action. Because if the dog wants to meet you, there's nothing wrong with that. If it wants the dog to jump on you by meeting, that's wrong. So turning your back, which is a rude response to a dog who wants to meet you, like I don't want to meet you, sends the dog a wrong message that his company is not appreciated because he's jumping. Okay, that behavior is wrong, but not the mindset makes you actually being wrong. And then your dog tries to understand and he wants you to regret because all he wanted is to meet. And what does a dog usually do? Jumps on your back. See, and that people says, well, my dog is aggressive. No, he's not aggressive. He doesn't understand that your gesture supposed to be kind of like a message, but basically you're rude. So we see our response usually confuses the dogs. And here is my advice. Take it with a grain of salt because different breeds, different personalities, different trauma, different story, different heritage, all these things come together because a dog is not just a dog. A dog assembles his, his personality from breed traits, which is the genetic information, and we have the individual individuality of a dog, which are the environmental factors. So if you have a dog who never been social, of course he doesn't have social rules, so he does whatever, whatever his breed tells him to do, which is jumping, biting, mouthing, whatever. So we teach him that. So if you want to teach your dog regret and forgiveness games, start with asking him to do things. I have something for you. This is that. Do you want that? Oh, I'm going to fight for it. Whoa. Mm, that's not acceptable. And your dog is like, oh, I regret. Ears, mouth, legs, tail, all of these signals, right? For example, Let's look at an example. A dog who does his head down when you say something, facing down, not lowering down. So not the head just down, just facing down. Facing down is already regret. Telling you, oh, sorry, I was just minding my business here. Don't, don't worry about it. I didn't mean it that way. Regret. Forgiveness. Okay, we're good. Everything is done. A dog, tails up. I'm confident pushing your buttons. Sorry. So that change is also a signal of regret. Huckles up is nothing to do with regret or forgiveness. Huckles up is I'm scared. Okay. It's your turn to help him out here. Okay. So the two ways of communication, the way you have to forgive and regret and the way your dog has to forgive and regret. And some dogs don't understand our way of regret because we usually don't regret. We always think we're right. And dogs don't see that. Some dogs don't even have experienced that because all they have seen is aggression. So closing here, again, the only way to play with dogs and teach them regret and forgiveness is through physical interactions with them and letting them know what's acceptable and what not. If a dog jumps on you, avoidance. If a dog wants to push you for doing something that you don't want, like pushing against the door, that's not acceptable. Thank you for sitting. Now I can open the door. Pulling on the leash. Unacceptable. The dog should regret. How does regret look like? Returning back to you. Forgiveness is going in the direction the dog wanted to go. So we see that our constant interaction with the dog is a game of regret and forgiveness, which leads to the conclusion, if you don't play that game right, your dog is messed up. And if your dog is already messed up and how to fix it, you start all over the game new game, new rules. Hey, from now on, I'm going to show you how I regret. From now on, I'm going to show you how I forgive. And you should show me how you regret, and you should show how you forgive. But we have to observe, because each dog's signals are different. Each dog speak similar language to dog, but always in a, in a, in a specific, let's call it like, um, what's the English term? Um, in a dialect. Same language, different dialect. So you have to understand your dialect of your dog and your own dialect because each person does different. Each trainer works different. Its behaviors works different. Behaviorist works different. So we have to be very careful because if you want to address a dog as a behaviorist that speaks a different language and you come in rude because you're not compliant to their family code of you put yourself in danger because your dog, that dog that you're working with will attack you because you're not compliant to their rules. That's why you sit down and come and talk with people. 
ask them how they set things up. What's what's the situation here? What do you do if your dog does that? What do you do if your dog does this? What does your dog expect from people to come into the door? What, what do they expect the dog to do? And once you have that information, then you take that, start there and start changing it by showing the dog's alternative regret and alternative types of forgiveness and then move him to a direction that you want him to do. So if you want me to regret, don't attack me. Give me space so I can do these things. If you challenge me and you expect me to regret at the same time, it's not going to happen because I will not submit. I will not lay down and I will not expose myself. So back off. So if something doesn't work for you, doesn't mean I'm wrong. Meaning is maybe the dog is wrong. But how does he know that? If he's not, if he doesn't learn that he can be wrong too, because dogs are absolute sometimes. They say, I'm right, period. I do what I want because they never had resistance. So resistance doesn't mean violence. Resistance means I'm not giving in. I don't regret because I'm right. And if you think you don't regret because you're right, then we have a dispute. It's your against me. Now who wins? The wins who's smarter or the one who's stronger. And I see many people says, oh, we're going to dominate my dog. That's such BS because all you're going to do is showing your dog that you know regret no matter what and leave him only one choice, attack. But you can lose the war and win. Uh, you can lose the battle and win the war. And sometimes you have to win the battle to win the war. It's up to you. But if you don't understand how this system works, you will not be able to do that. So try as, as a game. Try to teach your dog regret and forgiveness by changing interactions with each other. Okay, tug of war, great game to play. Fetching, great play to war. Oh, you're you're pushing me. I'm not throwing the ball because you're barking at me. That's unacceptable behavior. Oh, you stop barking. Oh, that works perfectly. Thank you so much for stop barking. Here you go. I'm tossing the treat. Make sense? So thank you so much for um, our presence or your presence here. If you liked what you saw, you're totally welcome to share it. If you didn't like it, don't share it. But tell me why you don't like it. If you like it, tell me why you liked it. If you see what I mean, give me some examples how you can apply it. Because many people want to learn from our conversations here. And you're part of that conversation. Your experience, your observations is important to everyone here. Okay? I'm not absolute. Sometimes I make mistakes. Sometimes my words don't come out right. However, I would say... Share your experience. How does your dog shows regret? How do you forgive him? How do you regret actions? How does your dog shows you forgiveness? And share it because each breed, each dog does it differently, slightly differently, a little bit there, a little bit there. Maybe your experience, maybe your sharing will help people understand. Oh, my dog does that too. Oh, that makes totally sense. Oh, he, he regrets and I didn't see it coming. And so I punished my dog for peeing and didn't see him that he regret with his behavior hiding under the table. I'm, like, I'm sorry, I screwed up. I'm like, Bad dog, why did you pee on the table? You know, that's kind of things. So thanks again for watching. Please share it um, in your favorite group or share in your comments. Please, in your comments, add your name and your dog so we have a better picture. If you can also, I think you can upload also a short video. So if you have a situation that you have captured, then please, please do and, and share it here or message me and I'll post it in our group. So thanks a lot for watching and have a great rest of your day.